everybody, this is Stacy with The Other Clinic, and this video is going to cover estrogen therapy. So you're either watching this because you're planning on getting on estrogen therapy, you're curious about it, you're a nerd like me and you just like to know stuff. Uh, at any rate, so I'm going to try and keep this as uh, close to or under 10 minutes if I can. Um, <laughs> I tend to ramble, but anyway, I have my little notepad up here on the side of the screen, so if you see me glancing up there, that's just me trying to keep on track so I don't bore you half to death. Anyways, let's jump right in. So, if you have any fertility concerns whatsoever before you get on hormone therapy, I advise you, I highly advise you to get them taken care of before hormone therapy, just in case. Because even though the latest studies that have come out have shown good results from people who want to come off of hormone therapy and either, you know, freeze eggs or sperm or what have you, you should assume that this might, might hinder your ability to later have children. Uh, and so if you can, I would advise taking care of it beforehand. Um, besides that, uh, you know, a lot of this can have to do with what your fertility is at baseline. I mean, some people are already infertile, who knows? It can have a lot to do with your age, your health, what medications you've been on, all sorts of stuff. So it's not just hormone therapy involved. And it, you know, it can, it can be good to find these things out ahead of time. Now, that being said, if you decide, you know, 20 years from now that you want to come off of hormone therapy, I would say your chances of fertility resuming are probably going to be less than someone who was on it for five years or something like that. Or let's say if you started hormone therapy when you're in your 40s and then, you know, you're 60 whenever you decide you want to have a kid. I mean, I don't know who wants to have a kid when they're 60. I don't want to have kids anytime. But I'm going to have to say that you probably would have less chance of resuming fertility just because of the age of your body at that point in time. Whereas someone who was 20 when they started and then, you know, five, six, seven years later, they decide, okay, I want to come off of it. Their body is still young enough that it probably will be able to resume its natural cycles and stuff like that. So, eh, just things for consideration in case fertility is a concern of yours. I highly advise you to take care of that before getting on hormone therapy. Anyways. So let's jump into some of the uh, physical changes. I'm gonna try and use some PC language, you know, so that folks won't get dysphoric and everything, but there are some things that I do need to name the anatomical parts of the body just to make sure that you are clear on what I'm trying to tell you. Um, buckle up. So in regards to the voice, Estrogen therapy, unfortunately, does not have anything to do with your vocal cords. It is not going to raise your voice or anything. That requires either a surgical procedure uh, for voice feminization or voice training. I do advise trying voice training, though. I've seen some really great success with that. It may not be instant, um, but I would say with a good, like, solid 6 to 12 months of voice therapy, you can get a, a pretty darn good feminine voice going in no time, if that's something that you want. I mean, not everybody wants that, so hey, whatever, move on. Um, so moving on to body hair. Uh, so your body hair over time on estrogen therapy is probably gonna slow its rate of growth and it may become a little bit lighter and thinner uh, all around. Pretty nice, I think. <laughs> but anyway, that includes facial hair. Now, it's not going to stop facial hair growth, but it can slow it somewhat and over time kind of thin it out. If you've ever seen um, a cisgender uh, man with a beard in their like 60s or 70s, how their beard kind of thins out and everything, that's partially due to the lower levels of hormones, the lower levels of masculine hormones that they have that no longer support this as much. And so it grows slower and thinner and it kind of loses some of that darkened color. So you may see that happen over time as well to your own facial hair. Um, let's see. So then hair on the head. Uh, usually what you'll see with this is um, people will see these if you have this like little cut out here, uh, which would be considered a more like, you know, masculine hairline, whoever gives these things names. You see how mine's kind of, I don't know what you call that shape, rounded, whatever. If I had been born cisgender male, it might have been more cut back to here, you know, kind of a widow's peak thing. Um, sometimes people will see that kind of fill in to where it's more of a rounded rather than a widow's peak. Pretty cool. Um, if you have hair loss to the top of your head, there, it... <clears throat> People have claimed that it has, you know, regrown and stuff like that. I don't see any significant regrowth happen with just estrogen therapy alone. 
Um, I do see that hair loss stops with estrogen therapy alone, and that's gonna be because your uh, testosterone level's lower, and therefore your DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone level's lower, uh, and whenever your DHT levels are lower, they no longer affect your uh, hair follicles, and that's usually gonna be the cause of this type of hair loss that you get up here, and then it just stops that from happening. Um, as far as regrowth, as far as I know, there is no scientifically proven anything that actually regrows hair. All, it, all the products out there right now typically just stop hair loss, not actually regrow it. But hey, I'm open to ideas in case anybody ever sees anything. Um, anyway, moving along from hair. So let's go to the bottom activity because a lot of people are interested in that even if they may not like the terminology used with it. So over time with estrogen therapy, you're gonna see a decrease in bottom activity and a decrease in your libido. Um, now because of this, uh, a lot of people you know, are happy, a lot of people are unhappy. The libido can return later and I have an entire video dedicated to that uh, in case you wanna watch it. Um, but what I'm most concerned about here is the, uh, the activity and the physical changes down here. So you can see a lot of shrinkage um, the first year to two years. You can see up to a 40% amount of shrinkage to the actual shaft and, uh, and themselves. <laughs> I'm trying to use, like I said, PC terms, but like everything down there. Uh, that you have can shrink up to 40%. Now, I mean, it may be less than that. It may be, you know, whatever. It might be 45%. Some people are totally cool with that, but it can cause some issues um, whenever you get active down there because the tissue, whenever it tries to stretch during activity after that, can become painful. And there are some things we can do to mitigate that. Um, but if that happens to you, then just talk to whichever one of your providers you're seeing here and, uh, and we'll try and help you through that. But anyway, so, Activity typically decreases down there. It doesn't mean you can't use anything. It just means it may become more difficult and less spontaneous and stuff like that. You may see a decrease in the amount of um, actual expelled fluid uh, at completion of sexual activities. You may see no fluid. You may see that it changes from white to clear or something like that. That's perfectly normal and expected on estradiol therapy. Um, now, Moving along from shrinkage and decreased activity, there is breast development, which literally everybody's interested in. I have a whole other uh, video or two dedicated to breast development in uh, trans feminine people. So check that out if you want a very specific breakdown of how that occurs. But in general, breast development is gonna happen rather slowly in most individuals. You may have a genetic predisposition toward being an early bloomer and see something occur within that first six to 12 months that's rather significant. But most people, it's gonna probably be that their significant growth comes more towards the end of the first year and into their second year of hormone therapy uh, before like super significant results are seen. And this is with full dose therapy, not like non-binary dosing. Non-binary dosing, of course, can uh, take a lot longer. Uh, and it depends on if that's even part of your goal anyway to develop, uh, to develop chest tissue on there. Um, but anyways, so watch the other video about breast development if you want a breakdown of like the entire process and whatnot, but just know that breast development is a rather slow process. It's not something that's going to happen overnight and certainly not within the first like month or something like that. This is a second puberty. Your first puberty didn't end in less than a year. This one is not going to do that either. Anyways, last topic to talk about would be the muscle and fat changes that happen in your body. Over about two to three years, you're gonna see a decrease in your muscle mass, and it's probably gonna be somewhere between 20 and 30% of a decrease, and you may see a strength decrease uh, in accordance with this as well. The fat on your body is going to start restructuring itself into a much more feminine pattern, so instead of the masculine pattern where it might collect more toward the front, toward the trunk and abdomen and stuff, it will slowly kind of redistribute down towards, uh, towards the thighs, the buttocks, the hips, and also, of course, the chest. People have asked about weight gain with estrogen therapy. On average, you do tend to gain a little bit of weight, but it is necessary weight because, I mean, you can't make chest tissue from nothing. You know, you're not, you're not gonna grow it for nothing. So whenever you are adding weight on here, uh, what most people gain is chest weight and a little bit for the hips and thighs. And it's not normally going to be more than about 5% of their total body weight. Anyone who's gaining more than that has a different problem going on. It's not being caused by this hormone therapy. 
Um, anywho, so hopefully this answers some of your basic questions about estrogen therapy before you go on it. I'm going to do a quick recap. Um, so fertility concerns, definitely try and take care of those before you get on um, hormone therapy just in case, but you can address it later if you so choose. Um, voice will not be changed by hormone therapy, at least not estrogen therapy. The hair on your body is probably going to grow slower and get lighter in color. The hair on your head, if you were having hair loss, will most likely stop having hair loss and you may get this little corner thing filled in if you have that kind of a widow's peak going on. Um, the bottom changes in libido, your libido is probably going to drop. Um, your bottom activity is going to become uh, less active and less spontaneous and whatnot. Uh, and you may see a good deal, up to 40% of shrinkage of that tissue over the first couple of years. Um, breast development is going to take several years to fully form out and usually starts being more significant and noticeable towards the end of the first year and in through and through your second year. Um, and then muscle and fat, you're going to lose muscle, you know, 20 to 30 percent over the first few years and then fat is going to slowly redistribute into a more feminine pattern. So just kind of be aware that this overall pattern is not all of the changes that can happen. That Everybody goes through this a little bit differently and when you have questions you can always write into us, uh, you know, and ask them. It's perfectly fine. Um, but anyways, hopefully this helped clear some things up for folks and uh, we will see you later. Bye.